everybody. Uh, today we've got a video on materiality at the uh, request of some students who wanted to discuss specifically how we choose the appropriate base or benchmark. All right, so let's start with the relevant auditing standard. Of course, ASA 320 says that we need to consider materiality in the planning of the audit and in the performance of audit procedures. And so remember materiality is that dollar value of error uh, or qualitative error that would cause uh, the decision maker to perhaps reconsider the choices that they've made. So it's difficult to figure out exactly what that dollar value is. And the key thing is that it requires a significant amount of judgment. So there's no right answer. Uh, we cannot be 100% right. So cannot be 100% certain of what materiality should be. So let's start off with thinking about the appropriate bases. Um, and so some common bases, uh, well, some common bases are profit before tax, turnover, which is sales, uh, total revenue based on sales. So that excludes extraordinary income. We have gross profit. which we know is revenue uh, less cost of goods sold. Total assets and total equity. So there are a number of different things we need to think about when we are looking at which base is appropriate to choose. So the sorts of things we need to consider are What's a key driver of the firm? All right, so what are their objectives? The other ones we need to think about are what is likely to be stable because we'd like to choose the same base year after year. Also linked to that is what might be predictable. All right, so what is a key driver of objectives which sometimes can also be called, my pen is dying here, whether it's relevant, is it stable, and is it predictable? So let's look at our options here using those characteristics. Let me see if I can find another blue pen. All right. So let's start with profit before tax. So the beauty of profit before tax is that it's really relevant for most publicly listed profit seeking companies. However, profit before tax is not going to be any good for charities, for government organisations or for loss making years. All right, so charities and government organisations aren't in the business of making profit. Uh, they're in the business of providing services. So therefore, profit before tax is not going to be any good. And you can't use profit before tax for uh, loss-making firms because you've got a negative figure there. So profit before tax is definitely relevant, but the issue can be that it might not be stable. So profit can change a lot from year to year. It can go up and down. Uh, turnover can be relevant to a lot of firms because most organisations want to increase sales. Um, it excludes any extraordinary income, but again, the issue is that it can fluctuate a lot. Um, depending on the business. So this is why it's really important as part of ASA 315 to understand the business that your client is in. 
So you need to be able to understand whether there are significant trends, uh, whether there's a lot of cycles. If it's a company that produces a fad item one year, uh, no item or lower sales the next year, then turnover might fluctuate too much to be a, a really good appropriate base. The next one is gross profit, which I mentioned before is cost of goods sold uh, subtracted from our revenue, which definitely again is relevant. Um, it's relatively predictable as well because the percentage change in cost of goods sold um, and percentage change in revenue tends to be fairly consistent. So if product prices stay similar and product uh, costing stay similar, then it's very predictable. So even if turnover is quite high, uh, profit should be uh, quite similar as a proportion. So we have total assets next. Total assets is great because it's definitely very stable. All right, property, plant and equipment tends not to move too much. Companies tend to keep the same inventory levels on hand. So stable and predictable are the good things. But what's not so great about total assets is that it doesn't work too well for service firms, right? Because there are no assets, uh, there's not a lot of assets typically for them to use. Total equity, well, the good thing about total equity is that it's very stable. It tends not to move too much, but the question becomes, is it really relevant? All right. So most organizations do not use any equity indicators as part of their KPIs for management remuneration. So we've got to pick something that motivates shareholders and managers, is stable, is relevant, uh, and is predictable. And sometimes we have trade-offs between these two. So for the majority of publicly listed companies, we go for our profit before tax. Now we also need to think about um, adjustments to materiality. Let me rub this off. Oh, uh, also as a percentage, we often use um, a percentage to calculate uh, the materiality. So we take the figure of profit before tax and we multiply it by some percent. Typically the figure we use for profit before tax is going to be a lot larger as a percentage, so perhaps 5%, compared to something like turnover, because turnover is a bigger number overall. So with turnover, we might use even something as small as 0.5%. So you might think, oh, okay, well, uh, what if I use turnover? I might use 0.5. If I use profit before tax, I use a larger percentage because the figure in itself is smaller. But most audit firms will have some sort of guideline. So they might say you might use uh, 1 to 5%, for example, for profit before tax. Turnover might be 0.5 to 1%, depending on whether your client risk is low or high, which is what I want to talk about next. So let's rub this out. Now it's important to remember that we want to select one base only for the planning. All right, so that does mean that I don't need to select a different base for the income statement as for the balance sheet. One base only for the income statement and the balance sheet. All right, but there are going to be adjustments based on information that you gather. So if risk increases, either from a control or an inherent perspective, based on the information, then materiality needs to decrease. Right? Make sure you have a look at um, the uh, video that we have on why when risk increases, materiality decreases. But we may need to adjust our risk 
uh, our materiality by the level of risk, and also for the specific accounts. All right, and that leads into risk. Uh, so some accounts may be more risky than others. We also need to consider variations in the base by industry. All right, so for some industries, uh, we mentioned charities and governments, um, we need to make sure that we select a base that is relevant to them so we won't be using profit. Um, so think about the industry as well as the individual company about what drives them in selecting your appropriate base. Remember that it's an audit judgment. We cannot be 100% certain as to what the base should be, but we can use our professional judgment to select the most appropriate base based on relevance, stability, and predictability. So think about those three things. Of course, in the Cloud9 case, we selected turnover because the company was loss making uh, for that year. Uh, but remember, it's also always open to adjustment. So the greater the risk of the client, perhaps the lower the risk will be at the planning stage, and then also the lower uh, the materiality will be at your performance level as well.